So episode 6. So this week, uh, I'll be talking about design for FDM. So I'm Ehong, and let's get the show started. So for this episode, the aims is to provide you a brief outline on the design for manufacturing for FDM 3D printing. And because I think more and more people are having access to FDM type of 3D printers, and people also want to create 3D printed scans of themselves. So it's very important to know what are the tips and what are the design rules that you should follow to make sure that your print out from the FDM process is optimized. So the learning outcomes is to be able to recognize whether a design is optimized for FDM 3D printing. So let's begin with the next slide. So the first rule is the 45 degrees rule. I think this is the most important rule because if you build objects in such a way that they incline by 45 degrees or more, then you do not have to use support material. So this will speed up the 3D printing process, especially for the FDM. So you can see on the picture on the right, why is it not good? Because it is like a C shape. So there's actually nothing that's supporting that overhang that is on top the cantilever bar like so the part will usually droop down so that's very bad so in the bottom image you can see this so you can from the left you can see it's a great model and then from the right you can see that that part was droop down and it will cause some problems in your print so yes so to make this point clearer let me show you some examples so on the left is a 3d scan image that I did. So you can see that my hands are well tucked in to my pockets. So this is very good because there's no support that's needed, there's no overhangs. And the angle of degrees is very high, almost like 80, 80 degrees, 75 degrees. You can see the, the angle that my arm makes with my leg. So on the right image you can see a similar scan image of somebody except that in this case he puts his arm his he puts his arm up so you can see that there's a vast amount of support that is needed to print his arm so this makes it very difficult for the 3d printer as it as the time required to print it is greatly increased and then the finishing of the part is also reduced because the the contact between the support material and the model creates a bit of rough surface that somebody has to clean it up. So next. So in this slide, I want to tell you that the overhangs are size dependent. So the, the, lo the larger your overhangs are from the main structure, then the more droop droopiness that you will see in the print as compared to a smaller overhang. So, yeah. so not only are overhang size dependent, they are also like thickness dependent. So you can see that an overhang that is very thin will usually warp upwards because an uh, overhang that has a thicker, port, thicker thickness, it will not warp upwards as well. So this is another point to take note of. So for the next tip, if you cannot avoid the support material, it's probably good if you can add your own support material. So the tip here is that you should design the support material such that it supports the overhang. However, there, there, there are minimum contact with the support material with the rest of your models. So you can see this, you can see this on the left image. So you can see that the colored support materials are like conforming to the model itself. While on the right image would be your standard support material that the software automatically generates. So you can see that it's like from the model and it goes straight down. So if if the if another part of the model is in contact with this vertical support, then you create some bad finishing. So that you have to clean up later. So yeah. So another benefit of adding your own support is that you can reduce the amount of materials needed. So you can see the image on the right, you can see the horse required very minimum amount of support. However, the horse on the left, which was generated 
using automatic support it has a lot of materials so the amount of time that you need to remove the materials is substantially more so that is why it is important to sometimes to build your own support to to optimize the print read quality so the next tip is to take note of the minimum small features that you have in your model so different types of printer has different capabilities so if you buy a, a professional printer the the minimum small feature size might be smaller as compared to a home 3d printer so this is very important this problem usually creeps up when somebody designs a model for a very large scale however the person that wants to print has to scale it down to a smaller scale so the features become extremely thin so it becomes impossible to print and it results in a bad print so we'll see some examples of this so for, ex for the examples of this small features size that can cause a problem in the printout you can see from the picture on the right the, the white and black triangle the tip of the triangle has really bad quality this is because the FDM nozzle, the heated nozzle is constantly hovering at the same spot and it, it, and it builds layer by layer so this the distance between the nozzle and the part is very close so the heat is very high so the plastic is not able to cool down and thus it pulls and it forms this mushy kind of effect there that you don't really want so, so to avoid such a case if you if you build such stuff with small features it is best to place them far apart so that the nozzle has to finish one part and then travels to the other part and hopefully the traveling time will allow the polymer to cool so you have better print quality so tip number four base orientation so you can see from the image here that there's basically the same part however it is orientated differently and you can also see that the design is slightly changed also so the way how you orientate the part will, de will determine the support material how much support material you need and also how well your part can adhere to the base plate so if your part has if your part is not it doesn't adhere well to your base plate then your part might warp and causes a failed print so it's very important to orientate your part such that you minimize support and to ensure good adhesion of your part to the base plate so another point to take note is that the orientation of your part can also determine the strength of your part so you can see from the picture on the top left the the stress point of this joint which is that 90 degrees corner is along the, each layer so it's parallel to the layer building so this results in a very weak joint however on the picture on the right you can see that due to a different orientation the stress point is now perpendicular to the layers so this results in a stronger joint so this and results in a stronger part so this is also an important point to take note of so and another example of orientating your part as you can see from these four images the way how you orientate your part will determine your final build quality so the point to remember is just that in the z-axis in the vertical axis is made is normally your printer's best resolution so you want to put features like the eye such that it is is on the is on the face of the vertical axis as you can see from the bottom left image so tip number five is the warping of long parts so warping can occur due to bad adhesion due to bad orientation as we explained previously or it could happen because your part is just naturally long so you can see from the image on the top the long part warps on the side so a possible way to solve this is is by introducing holes so that the part has less tendency to warp because there's a break in the material in the lengthwise so this is this will help in the warping issues so another way to solve warping of long parts is that you specifically build raft 
or support material to cover the corners of your long rectangle in this case so that the corners are less likely to warp. So for this next example you can see that for long beams that spans a long distance they also have a tendency to droop down or warp so this is an important point to note whenever you want to print such a structure. So I think you can see from the previous tips and examples are, is that there are many ways that a part can warp or can droop or distort because of the geometric features and because of the scale of the part. So the last tip that I want to share with you guys is in making parts modular. So in part A, you can see that it is an entire object. But in part B, you can see it's object A split into two. So this ensures that your part requires no support. So it helps avoid some of the problems that, you, that are mentioned previously. So this is a very good tip actually to make very complex and large scale parts. Okay. So for the example of this, you can see that this toy is made from diff a number of 3D printed parts. So by making the parts modular, one can actually make very complex parts, movable objects. So this is a very, very good example of modular parts. So that's the end for the episode. So this episode was rather lengthy because there are a number of tips that I want to tell you guys. And there are also a number of examples that I want to show you to further enforce the points that I wanted to make. So in summary, there's the 45 degrees rule that I said to minimize the amount of support. And if you cannot minimize the amount of support, then try to add your own support because your own support will be much, usually much more intelligent as compared to the automatic support. Next is to know the minimum small feature that you can print using the printer that you are printing on. Next, we have the orientation of the part. So the way how you orientate the part will also will also determine the amount of support that you need basically and basically also the strength of your part will be determined based on your orientation next we have warping of long parts so try to avoid the warping of long parts by creating small holes or to increase the amount of support so that to ensure better adhesion of your part to the base plate and lastly is the modular part so if you know how to make parts modular, it will be much easier to print because you can, you can avoid all the problems that I mentioned previously. You also speed up the printing process because the printing process is now all split it up to small pieces. So this will be also very beneficial to minimize the amount of problems that you face. So let's move on to references now. So as you can see that this episode is very much different from the previous. I use a lot more images now and very little words. So all the references I've already put it below the images. So I thank a lot for all to all the websites for the wonderful content. As I couldn't have really done this episode without all the work that other people have done and all the wonderful illustration that people have made on Design for manufacturing for FDM 3D printing. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and stay tuned for next week for another episode. Thank you once again.